As we continue our discussion on cell structure, the next thing we want to focus on are two cell categories. And that will be the title of our next flowchart. Cell categories. There are two major cell categories. We briefly mentioned them and talked about them in our Origins of Life. And we'll reiterate what they are in this flowchart, but more so talk about their structure so that we understand where they come from and how they're sort of differentiated from each other. So the first one that we'll talk about, um, the first category of cells are known as prokaryotes. Prokaryotes. And this name, you can think of the pro prefix, to think of it as before. This name sort of translates to before nucleus. Think of it like that and we'll explain why that's the name in just a second. So prokaryotes fall under um, two major domains. Domains are just a classification tool biologists use to sort of organize life. The two major domains that are prokaryotic are bacteria, I'll just write BAC, and also archaea, A-R-C-H-A-E. Uh, archaea are very, very archaic, sort of bacteria-like, but not exactly bacteria. Um, sort of uh, single-celled organisms that fall under the prokaryotic sort of umbrella of cells. And we all know what bacteria are. Prokaryotes developed first. They were the first living cells. They were the origin of life that we talked about. And they developed about 3.5 billion years ago. In addition to this, prokaryotes have many major characteristics that define them, that tell us what it makes a prokaryote, and we'll talk about them right now. So some of the characteristics of prokaryotes include the fact that they have a plasma membrane. A plasma membrane is another way of saying a cell membrane. From this point forward, I'm going to abbreviate plasma membrane as PM. Plasma membrane is something that allows the prokaryote, if you remember from our origin of life discussion, to be sort of like a vesicle and have an internal environment that's independent from its external environment. In addition to that characteristic, prokaryotic cells also have what is known as a cytoplasm. I like to think of a cytoplasm as the cell's real estate. The area in which the pl plasma membrane is enclosed, enclosing that things happen on. The cytoplasm is simply known as also the interior of the cell. So we'll write that down, interior of cell. And it also has um, and is filled with cytosol. Filled with, it's called cytosol. Cytosol is just sort of like a jelly fluid, sort of semi-fluid like structure that allows things to move within the cell. I'm going to give you a basic drawing of these characteristics in just a second. We just want to label them all out first. One other characteristic is that these have no nucleus. Prokaryotes have no nucleus. Notice the name now, before nucleus, these arose and developed before an actual nucleus was uh, part of cell structure. So they have no nucleus. Oftentimes they also, whenever you hear no nucleus, you also should automatically start thinking of this one, this other no. They have no membrane bound organelles. I'll explain that in just a second, but these are the two no's you have to know. You have to understand that prokaryotes are prokaryotes mainly because they have no nucleus and no membrane-bound organelles. In addition, prokaryotes have ribosomes. Ribosomes are cell structures or parts of cells that are involved in protein synthesis. And proteins are things that the cell can use to carry out its functions very useful. And lastly, I just want to mention their size. Prokaryotes are about 1 to 10 micrometers. So we'll write that down, micrometers. So a basic prokaryotic cell, we can draw it as, let's say, this is going to represent what? If I'm drawing something and I say this is the, our environment, external environment, and I'm enclosing something, this will then be the plasma membrane, of course. So this is our PM. In addition to our PM, what we're going to have, and I actually forgot to mention this, there's one more characteristic. It's called the nucleoid. This is not a nucleus. Okay, this is not a nucleus. This is just an area 
in which uh, the prokaryotic cell has some free floating DNA. So we'll say free floating uh, DNA. It's usually found in this region. So I'm going to draw some free floating DNA right over here. So this is just my rough drawing of DNA. That's just a nice region, a collection of DNA. What you want to understand is that it's not enclosed by membrane. It's free floating. It has the ability to move anywhere within this cell. In addition, what we're going to have is a cytoplasm. And our cytoplasm will just be this, this area right here, this interior area. I actually don't want to color it in, but this, let's say the gray space that's enclosing, that's being enclosed, this is representing our cytoplasm. Once again, I like to think of it as the cell's real estate. This is where all the things happen, and this is this plasma membrane is the fence, this border of our real estate in which things can happen. Within our cytoplasm, there will be ribosomes. Ribosomes are usually just represented like this, as small dots, so we'll call those ribosomes. Ribosomes. And cytosol is just the fluid in which ribosomes get to move around. That I notice how I said these are free-floating DNA free-floating because they get to move around in cytosol. So those are our prokaryotes. The next thing we want to talk about is our next category of cells known as eukaryotes. So eukaryotes. These are not before nucleus but now known as, let's say, true nucleus. In quotes. Because this prefix u means true. As far as domain is concerned, eukaryotes are within just one singular domain called eukarya. The name comes from the actual category that they fall under, eukaryotes. They arose about 1.8 billion years ago, so they're a bit younger. About 1.7 billion years younger. In addition to this, they have some major characteristics that are worthy of mentioning. These characteristics, write that down include they have a plasma membrane. That means that they are able to separate their internal environment from their external environment. They do have membrane-bound organelles. Most of our discussion today will be devoted to these membrane-bound organelles. Um, so they have membrane-bound organelles and they also have a membrane-bound nucleus. So their nucleus is separated from, their from its cytoplasmic environment by a membrane. And their size is about 10 to 100 micrometers. So a lot bigger than our prokaryotic ancestors. So we can give a rough drawing of this as uh, a circle. This circle represents, of course, the plasma membrane because we're separating our cell from its gray external environment. Inside of it, we have a nice nucleus, and this is a region. Notice how I'm drawing it in a dark circle as opposed to free-floating DNA. DNA will be in here, and it will stay in here because this is a membrane-bound nucleus. In addition, we will have membrane-bound organelles, so I'll draw just a random square. This square is another membrane within a plasma membrane. Notice how there is an environment that's going to be right here separate from its cytoplasmic environment. So this is our membrane-bound organelle. And in addition, we're going to be filled with cytosol. So this is our cytoplasm, just like our prokaryote. It's filled with cytosol. And cytosol is that, once again, over here. Cytosol is just uh, a fluid that's also seen here um, in eukaryotes that allows things to move around. So overall, these are our two different cell categories, prokaryotes and eukaryotes. Prokaryotes are the early guys. These are the ancestors. They have very basic characteristics. Most important thing you want to know is that they have no nucleus and no membrane-bound organelles, and they do have a plasma membrane. Some people forget that they have a plasma membrane to separate its environment. Eukaryotes are a little bit different and a little bit more advanced. They are true nucleus cells. They have a nucleus. They do not have a nucleoid region. They actually have a nucleus, and that nucleus is membrane-bound. They have membrane-bound organelles, and they have a plasma membrane to make sure everything stays in place.